Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It is so good to see you here today. So before I get started, I want to ask you to go ahead and hit the red subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I would love to have you join my YouTube family. We have a lot of fun here. I go places and do things. I do a lot of cooking, and mainly I just do a lot of storytelling. And I talk a lot about my childhood growing up in South Mississippi, and that's what today's video is gonna be about. Um, you know, I was thinking about this PTSD, which I, I know I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, but I'm thinking about renaming it to present traumatic stress disorder, especially relating to my childhood. Um, you know, when I think about the fear and anxiety and the stress that I went through as a child, um, you know, I really was experiencing some type of severe traumatic disorder. And I didn't know it then, I was only three and four years old, but now that I'm uh, 70 years old and I look back. So I think that what I had as a child would, would have been known as present traumatic stress disorder and uh, that has switched over to post-traumatic stress disorder nowadays. But I think that I do a pretty good job controlling it. So I'm not complaining about it anymore, but I do want to talk about it. So I have described in other videos about my childhood and the way my mother was so abusive and neglectful and emotionally deprived woman. Um, she, she really had no type of emotions as far as expressing love or uh, comfort or any type of security towards me or my mother just was not able to express any type of love or nurturing behavior whatsoever. She was very cold and distant and um, you know that really did affect me as a child and because I was never held or, or hugged or loved or was never even told you know I love you that affected me severely and of course growing up as a child I didn't know that you know I didn't know the reason for why I felt the way that I did and why I was so afraid of everything all the time but I just wanted to go back and tell y'all some of the stories relay some of the things in my life that happened that I can now look back and um, label those as being uh, traumatic and stressful. But I remember I w was experiencing nightmares and at that time I was about four years old because we had, we had three bedrooms in the house and of course mother and daddy had the, the main bedroom and then my sister Bobby had a, a bedroom and my sister Angela had a bedroom. So, of course, when this happened, I was uh, sleeping on a little twin size bed in the same bedroom with mom and daddy. So I know that I had to be in three or four years old because my sister Angela was still home. Uh, she didn't leave home until after she graduated high school and um, got a job and got her own apartment. So she would have been 18 when she left. And I was still sleeping in mom and daddy's bedroom. They had put a little um, twin size bed in there. Uh, they had shared a bedroom when my brother Malcolm was still living at home. But when he joined the Air Force and left home, then they were moved into their own uh, separate bedrooms. But I still had a, a twin size bed in mom and daddy's bedroom. And I would just have nightmares at night. And I remember they were very visual. But I remember sitting up in my twin size bed one night and um, Mama, she always, we always had these electric blankets to sleep under. Why? I don't know because it never really got that cold in Mississippi. But, you know, the, um, the control to the electric blanket had a light on it and it was on a little table at the foot of my bed. And I remember sitting up in my bed one night and seeing this woman's head uh, perched up on the, just her head sitting there on the, on the control box of the electric blanket. Uh, Dan, my sister had been dating a kid named Danny, and my parents had gotten to be friends with his parents, and we would go over to their house, and I remember we would make homemade ice cream with this uh, ice cream churn on their front porch, and we had a lot of good times there, but for some reason, uh, the nightmare that I had, uh, Mrs. his name was Danny Pierce, 
and Mrs. Pierce's head was sitting on that controller. Uh, it was just lit up and her eyes were open. I just remember waking up and just screaming. Um, I don't remember anything else about what the nightmare was about or, or what might have caused me to have that nightmare. But another um, present traumatic stress disorder symptom that I had was fear of crossing bridges. I would just go into this screaming panic uh, every time that we would go someplace and we would approach a bridge. And especially this bridge that was um, in a town up in northern Mississippi where my sister-in-law, Charlotte, was from. And we would go there to, to visit her and her family. And, um, and my brother, after they got married, they did live in that little town for a while. So Daddy would drive us up there to visit them. And there was this one bridge that was, um, it was over this little river, and it was a wooden bridge with the, the metal, you know, the steel support. It, it was just a one-lane bridge. It just had the wooden planks down it. So as we would approach the bridge, if there were to be another car on the other side, then Daddy would have to back up on that one-lane bridge on those wooden planks, and I would just have this fear in my stomach, and it was all I could do to keep from vomiting. But I just remember the, the pain and the fear and the screaming and the panic. It, it was just horrible. And another thing that I did when at that manifested um, fear in my life was my chewing off my fingernails. I still bite my fingernails to this day, but when I was a little girl, I would just chew them. I would chew them way below the quick, and they would just bleed. And, oh, it, it would just hurt so bad. But that was the only thing that I knew to, to deal with this emotional fear and pain in my brain. And, um, and then I would take that little bottle of Mercurochrome and, and paint that across my fingernails. So <laughs> about half of my childhood, I, I walked around with this orange uh, fingertips. And let's see, oh, and another fear for me was uh, fear of fire. And it seemed like Daddy was always playing with fire. He just loved to burn off the field. I've told y'all before that we lived on a 20-acre um, plot of land. And Daddy, he would take his old tractor and plow a, a firewall around it. I'm not sure if that's what it was called, but you know, he would plow around it, the, the field, before he would set it afire. But the fire would still escape the, the firewall. You know, it would jump across it and then it would set the neighbor's fields on fire. And I remember standing at the their bedroom window, which uh, the, the rear window of the house faced the 20 acres of land. And I remember standing there in front of that window and just chewing my nails off and just screaming and, and tears just rolling down my face. I was just terrified. And Mother never came and put her arm around me and tried to comfort me, but she would come and start screaming and yelling and, and cussing at me and telling me to stop all of that screaming and crying and to, to quit and that I was being ridiculous and she was tired of hearing it and just all of this nasty derogatory stuff to me. And I was only about five or six years old. And of course her screaming and cussing and yelling just made my fear even worse. And one time, when the fire did jump the, uh, the, the fire line, it went into the woods and set, set the woods on fire. Our 20 acres of land connected to the Hemby family um, down north of us. And then to the, the west of our land was my Uncle Ode's family. And all, all of these Ladners, it was Ode Ladner and Orth, Ortho Ladner and Otis Ladner and <laughs> All of these Ladners, Juanita Ladner, and all of these Ladners, you know, we, we all just lived right there together. Um, my mother's two sisters, Aunt Anne and Aunt Doll, were married to two Ladner brothers. So that's how we all got there on these, this same area in Lumberton out there off of Highway 13. But uh, Rick Hemby, his family is the one that lived in the house down below the woods, you know, where daddy would always set it on fire. So one time the fire got so close to the Hemby house that they had to call the Lumberton fire truck to come out there and, 
and um, you know, put extinguish the fire so that their house didn't get burned down. But it, you know, Daddy, it didn't even bother him. You know, he was damned and determined to burn off that land. Um, I guess he didn't have a bush hog or, or didn't know how to bush hog or anything. He just let the fire take care of it. But it also took, just about wiped out all of the, the neighbors' houses too. Uh, by the way, uh, Rick Hamby is the son of cousin, uh, we called her Sissy Hamby, uh, chanted Ole Miss and got his law degree from Ole Miss at the same time that John Grisham did. And they were very good friends. And Rick is the character Ace in John Grisham's novels. But unfortunately, um, Rick passed away in 2013. And uh, John Grisham dedicated his book, uh, Gray Mountain, to the character Ace, who was my second cousin, Rick Kimby. But I, I just, you know, when I, when I had children, I swore that I would never, ever raised them the way that my mother, my mother raised me with, with no type of um, care or concern or no type of nourishing or emotional love. And I, I was just always a very hands-on and, and loving mother. I wasn't a, a helicopter mom. You know, I didn't stand over them all the time and make sure they did their homework perfectly and make sure they did this or did that perfectly or did their chores perfectly. But I, I was always a very loving and, and nurturing uh, mother, and I made sure that my three children knew how much I loved and just absolutely adored them. And I still live my life that way. Um, of course, I am still scarred by, you know, the, the stress and the fear and the pain that my parents put me through as a child, as, as little Glenda Merle. So I, I do try to love and nurture and take care of little Glenda Merle now because she still lives inside me. She's still in my heart, and, and I do love that little girl. I can love little Glenda Merle now, even though my mother and father didn't. So I hope you I enjoyed my little uh, story time again today. I, I haven't made any plans. I may get in the kitchen later and cook or I may run over to the nursery. I don't think I'm gonna to go to Hicks Nursery because they are, it's a huge nursery. In fact, the town Hicksville was founded by the Hicks family. Uh, they go way, way back. And it's a huge nursery and it's well known and well respected and it's very busy and the lines are so long. So maybe I'll just drive over to a small nursery today and run in and pick up another tomato plant. I want a tomato with some green tomatoes on it already. <laughs> So thank you so much for stopping by today and watching my video. I just appreciate each and every one of you so much. If there's anything that you would like to share about your childhood or your life uh, in general, just feel free to leave me a comment. So please give me a thumbs up and share, and y'all just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.